<laughs> That's a computer program. It's you gotta crazy. be kid. You gotta be kidding me. You know, when we get bands that come in here into the studio, and we're trying to convince them to leave their amps in the car, you know, we say, "Look, we have better things here," and then they want to see what they are, and we yeah. say, "Well." You can't really see it, but it's over here on the computer screen. You know, you get that look. Yeah. You plug them in, <laughs> dial up some sort of big, raunchy, crunchy, monstrous sound, right. which they, you know, then they start to believe. Yeah. Then you tell them to turn their guitar down to as, you know, as near off as they can. And when it's clean and chimey and clear, without the shh, you right. know, that we would have gotten with their amp stack. Right. Paul's favorite guitar amps, his favorite speaker cabinets, and his favorite microphones, and we're supposed to make it sound like he thinks it should sound in the control room. What we do is we, we he'll put up his favorite amp rig, we'll get it to sound good in the room, just as you would, you know, if you're making a record. Uh, some of these are Paul's microphones that he's brought. Which, you want to go through the mics? Oh, this is an old 409. You've got an early 421, just sounds beautiful. A couple of 57s, which is Peter's. That's my shtick. That's his rig. It sounds gorgeous. This is a uh, uh, AKG mic that's hit. the diaphragm's been changed and the electronics been changed to sound just like an old C12. It's actually got original C12 diaphragm in it. And over here, you've got a Aurora ribbon mic. These are typically the go to mics for recording guitars. Yeah. Now, when you're making a record, you're not going to, well, some people would, but I am not going to put eight microphones up on a guitar no. rig. I'm going to pick, you know, my favorite. What we've tried to do here is give you, uh, what in this case, like five favorites, right. you know, to choose from. Let's start with a 409, Pete. Okay. <laughs> So this is the beginning of it, and we'll go in and we'll move the mics until it sounds just perfect. That's uh, the first take on it. What about the, the C12 diaphragm? 40, you want to start with 409? 421 is the right, first. Right. 409. The two fifty sevens together. That's all good. The your C twelve. Good. Cool. And the Royer. Cool. So they all uh, they all have their personalities for sure. So when we get that right, the waves people come in and do the models. And the moment where I can't tell the difference between the model or the mic cabinet is the, mo the moment where we know, well, okay, we've got that. This is the model. Right now we're listening to the model of the amp we got in that room. With a mirror in the process for the GTR stuff, we can sort of freeze the moment and say, okay, that's a great sound, and then it's like, okay, hold it. Switch it. They're really, 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 really close. Good job. Wow. Very cool. I mean, you just do it again. <laughs> just go ahead. That's A. What's B? That's really cool. Good job. You, when you think about the time it takes to go get another amplifier, carry it up the stairs, plug it in, let it warm up, put the microphones where you like on it, yeah, right. and then say, nah, I don't like that. I mean, that's why in the 80s, you know, you would spend days getting the guitar sounds together. So clicking through different speaker cabinets and different amp heads now, it's, you know, it's almost like cheating. You know, I have a very large amp collection. 
uh, a whole bunch of stuff that are holy grails, uh, amps that are famous for clean, famous for certain tones on records. Anyway, I shipped them all up here, and we've been sampling these new amps um, over the last days, and the results we're getting are wonderful. <laughs> this, is, this is the first one. and not being able to use these tones on a CD. It's just gorgeous. They sound the same, and in some ways better than the amp because there's no noise, which is really cool. The, the fun of this is, is that people are going to be able to choose from amps that you, know, you wouldn't otherwise be able to play through. You know, they're, not everyone can afford the amp collection that, that uh, you're now starting to have at home. I have assembled an amp collection. Yeah. I mean, the whole goal when I started to get these amps was only to be able to instantly get uh, recordable tones when we turn the, the mic pre's and the mics and the recorder on. And the fact that we were going to be able to offer all these tones to everybody through a software package and uh, a little hardware device um, through Waves, I find is remarkable. I'm, I'm just laughing. <laughs> Paul has been developing this GTR product with the people from Waves. He called me when he was initially contacted by them to work on it. He was very excited about this. He says, you have to hear this. My initial reaction was, you know, we have this. We have guitar amp modeling stuff in our Pro Tools rigs already. We, do we really need any more? He's like, no, you really have to hear this. I said, so fine, have them send it. They sent an early beta version of the software. We put it in the computer. And uh, lo and behold, it sounded better than what we were already using. Which, at first, being in the studio business, this annoys you because now you have to spend money on something else, as if there isn't enough to buy. Um, all of the engineers here sat there and went through the different amplifiers, and there was just a few in the early beta version. And we really felt like this was something that we could use to make records. It wasn't just sort of a temporary replacement. <laughs> something that that we're so excited about the new amps we've been modeling that that I feel like I haven't been talking about all the stomp boxes that that are part of this package you got to remember that waves being the company that's made this they have a large library of very nice sounding courses and delays to pick from which they're able to make a simpler interface you know to make it more like a guitar pedal but the code and the sound is still you know uh, the studio quality can we get what is what I call my tone well, let's see. I can tell you what it is, okay? It's a teeny bit of chorus after the amp with echo and reverb, but the echo goes back and forth between the two speakers. Is okay. that something you can do? Yeah. <laughs> Up at sound check. <laughs> Is that in the ballpark or what? Yeah, it's in the ballpark. It's cool. well in the bar park. It... Anyone who's using a digital workstation and recording electric guitar at this point owes it to themselves to try this. We have a great time with it. We love turning other people onto it for the first time. Uh, we're making records with it. It's no longer, uh, you know, a poor substitute. It is the tool that we use to make records. So uh, with GTR 3.0, it just takes it to the next level. And uh, working with Paul and Amir and all the guys at Waves has been a treat. You owe it to yourself to try this. That's crazy. Too much fun. <laughs>